God bless you all. Welcome once more to this broadcast. I hope that you are doing well in your houses and in whatever you have had to do this week. Welcome once more to the to this precious time in the presence of the Lord. So I was I uh, just want to invite you to pray so the Lord may bless us today, that we may be able to worship his name in spirit and in truth, that we may be able to accept his word and put it into work. Heavenly and beautiful Father, we give you all our thanks for your mercies, for your love, because you have been so good, so kind to all of us. Thank you, O Lord Jesus, for everything that you allow us, God, to go through. Thank you, Father, for these times. Thank you, O Lord, that... You give us, Lord, the opportunity to be connected, even if it is through the Internet, God, but we want to connect to your presence in this day. Help us, O oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth, O oh God, that even though, God, we are not together in church, we are together in spirit. We are together, Lord, with one purpose, and that is to worship your name. And in this morning, Lord, I ask you to fill our hearts, to fill our minds with your with your rivers of, with your waters of, of peace with your waters, O oh Lord, all over our bodies, O oh God, Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to pour out your anointing in every one of us, that we are able, Lord, to enjoy your presence even though we are at home, that we are able, O oh God, to experience your love, to experience your presence in this day. Thank you, O oh God, because you are good and forever are your mercies. Amen and amen. And I want to invite you to be glad today, to be joyful at home, to smile at your family, to just praise the name of the Lord because although we are not together, the Lord is with all of us. We are feeling the presence of the Lord in this place, but I'm sure that you are also feeling this uh, wonderful uh, time in the presence of the Lord. We are feeling the presence of the Lord at home. So get ready to praise the name of the Lord in this beautiful day.
And I want to invite you to lift up your hands and keep praising the name of the Lord. Adore him because he is worthy to receive all praise, all honor. He is holy, 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 three times holy. We worship you, Jesus. We want to open up our hearts. We want to give you everything that we have brought for you today. From, Lord, maybe we can say from the comfort of our houses, Lord. But even our houses, oh God, has become, they have become little churches, I would say. Little churches spread around the world. And gathered together just for one thing. Just all together just for one thing and that is to praise your name lift up your hands close your eyes and feel the presence of the lord because he is there he's in the he's in the middle of his church he's in the middle of his people all of us connected through a precious through the precious presence of the lord worshiping his name
as a living sacrifice. We surrender our lives as a living sacrifice. We surrender ourselves today, Jesus. We want to humble unto you. We are over here in your presence because we want to feel that touch that changes everything, that touch of heaven. We wait in, oh Lord, for you to pour out your spirit in our hearts.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. It is wonderful to be once more in the presence of the Lord. And we rejoice that the Lord has given us the opportunity to come and worship His holy name and also glorify Him with words of songs, of gladness, of happiness. The Lord is in His holy temple. And uh, right now we want to 
go to the word of the Lord. We will read uh, the word of God in the book of Acts, chapter 1, from verses 6 and on. And in the meanwhile, I just want to greet all of our listeners and viewers around the world. And uh, we want to wish you the best of God for your life. Now we want to enter into the Word of God and we will uh, read these verses. And uh, the Word of the Lord says like this. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which, said, uh, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall succumb in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name. We exalt you for all your goodness, your mercy, your power, your might. We thank you, Father, for being so good and wonderful to us. We want to adore you and um, express our gratitude for the salvation that you've given us in your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. At this time, O oh Lord, I want to ask you, grant us a mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, O oh God, that we may receive this wonderful blessing, O oh God, and that our eyes be enlightened, that we may see all the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We want to take this part of the scriptures that we read here in the book of Acts in chapter 1. We're going to speak about how a church will go through his way on this earth. It is a very well-known passage that we have uh, read today. The book of Acts in chapter 1 is referring this last time uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ together with the disciples. We see here that the Lord Jesus is speaking to them and giving them the last instructions. They also are taking the opportunity to ask their last questions to the Lord. At the end of this, we see that God sent angels uh, to speak with them. And these angels uh, that were um, in white apparel, they are giving them some future instructions. So right here I could see the Lord instructing the church how is the way they must go through white churches on earth. When we uh, read the verse 6, we find... Uh, the first thing, and it is the disciples. They are interested in knowing what is um, the role of the Lord Jesus Christ in these human governments. And also they want to know whether the Lord Jesus Christ is going to restore the kingdom to Israel. There was something in the mind of the disciples, and this was very clear for them because the Lord Jesus Christ, now they understood he is the Messiah. When they studied the prophecy, they knew that the Messiah was the one 
who would deliver Israel from the hand of their enemies. And the Messiah will sit on the throne of David to rule according to the will of God. So since now they acknowledge Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of God that came down to this world. Since Jesus Christ has proved that he is the Son of God because he is now resurrected and he is in this great power, they are interested to know, Lord, it is right now that you will restore the kingdom uh, to Israel again because they were waiting for that. The, the great and sweetest dream for the Jews was to think about the time when the Messiah would come and accomplish the prophecy and they would see the liberation or the deliverance that God would give them and they could see the Messiah reigning, sitting on the throne of David, not only the little nation, but also to see the Messiah in his worldwide kingdom. So they are really interested. But the Lord Jesus Christ is just telling them now, there are some things that it is not for you to know. There are some things that are in the power of of God the Father alone, his own power. This will give us a little insight also because normally we human beings want to know everything. It is amazing when we study the scriptures, when we come from Genesis to Revelation to see how God has drawn a plan for human being to go through his life, and to be a channel in the presence of God. And he will give us the main instructions, but at the same time, it amazes me that God will many times not let you know the little details which are involved in all the plans that he has already organized for everyone. In the case, for instance, of Joseph, he just showed Joseph, that the, he uh, would be like a king. He saw the brother's shifts just bending towards his own sheep. He saw the moon, the stars, and he saw the sun just bending or kneeling down in the presence of himself. But God in the dreams never told Joseph anything about the whole process. Never told Joseph that he was going to go to Egypt and uh, that he was going to be there as a slave, that someday he would be a prisoner. God reserves many little details for himself and he just gives us wonderful outlines of what is going to be in ourselves and especially he will show us what is the end of the calling that he gives to everyone that is in the hand of God. But normally he will not go to the points just telling everyone the little details in life. And so is the Lord Jesus Christ telling them here, look, concerning these things, it is not for you to know because there are some things that he says, there are some things which the Father has put in his own power. In other words, God reserves to himself the right to decide for every little detail without telling people, without telling his children, without telling his servant, without telling the church what is going to happen between lines. The big story is written there. The big story is clear. The men were sinners 
God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the main lines there. Now when the Lord Jesus Christ speaks to everyone, to the disciples and to the church there, then he goes to something which is much more important. The Lord is not telling the details. He says, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Just let all these details, wherever they are, in the hands of God for yourself. But then he goes into something which is really important for church. While we are down here, he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What God is saying here through our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ, is that there are some things which are much more important for you and I than the little details. We are always behind the details. Every one of us, when we go to the Word of God, when we study the word of the Lord, when we come to church, we'd like to know the details. Even in life, many people want to have revelation about what is going to happen to them in two, three years. But let me tell you that God is not so interested in you and I to know those things, but the Lord Jesus Christ is telling, church, you must know something which is very important. You shall receive power, when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. In other words, let me tell you something. While you are crossing in this life, there are some things which are really important for you. The details are not that important. When the Lord Jesus Christ, for instance, commissioned the disciples to go into the field to preach Matthew chapter 10, and in the other Gospels, you will find the same. You will see the Lord Jesus telling them, go preach this, that. The Lord Jesus Christ never spoke, for instance, about money. He never told the disciples, and I will give you the provision. I will give you this and that. I will do, no, no. He never spoke about these little details. Why? Because our God is interested in everyone to depend on him. That the church may know for sure that we are not doing our own work. That the things that we are doing are for the glory of God. That the only one who has the right to control everything is himself. But the church must be clear in something. We must be filled with the Holy Ghost. The church needs something important. In spite of the details, sometimes they will be positive. Sometimes they will be negative according to what you want to see. But the Lord is telling the church here, what is important for you is that you be filled with the Holy Ghost. Church, if we are going to go through our path in this earth, if we are going to finish our course down here, if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be useful, if we are going to be the real clean channel, we should be for the glory of God to reach others. The most important thing the Lord is telling us here is we must receive the Holy Ghost in ourselves. The Holy Spirit must come into ourselves. We should be interested not in those little details, but we should be interested in the Holy Spirit in ourselves. Because if we are filled with the Holy Ghost, He will fill us with the supernatural power to overcome whatever thing that may come on the way. We don't know exactly what we are going to face tomorrow. But the Lord Jesus is just making sure that the church has the ability and the capacity to go through the little details that they already don't know. But he is saying what is really important for you and what is going to give you the capacity is the Holy Spirit in yourself. Maybe some things that you will face 
today, tomorrow, I don't know, there will be things that you will glorify God because of that. Some of the things that you may be facing or you are already facing, today or tomorrow, whatever it is, maybe will be negative and you will cry and you will weep and you will feel uncomfortable. You will be out of your comfort zone. But the Lord is telling you the most important thing for you to go through this life and to finish your course and to be in the real success you need is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because then the Holy Spirit will bring into you all the supernatural uh, tools that you need to overcome in whatever the situation is, whether it is positive, whether it is negative. Remember that not everything that is dangerous is negative. There are some few things that we think are positive that could become negative. And there are some few things that are negative that could become positive. For instance, money. Money is a blessing when you use money in the right way. When church uses money to do his task and don't put the eyes, don't fix his heart in money, it is a blessing. But at the same time, the word of the Lord says, the love of money or the love for money for riches is the root of every evil. So things that are some point you could see positive could become negative. And things which at some point in time you just point to them and say negative, they could become positive for you. The word of the Lord is telling us here, come on, don't be so curious about the little details in life, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because once you are filled as church with the Holy Ghost, you will be able to make it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the second thing, because I want to just go, we have just half an hour every Sunday. The, the second thing I want to go, I mean, the third thing is right there in, in verse 8. It says, And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the last corners of the earth. There are some things that must be clear for church. And the Lord is telling the church at this moment to the disciples, forget about the things that the, that the Father has put in his own power, but you must be aware of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And the other thing that you must be clear about is that you have been commissioned to do something that comes from the very heart of the Lord, which is the real reason why we church are down here on this earth. We do a lot of things as church. We sometimes do social work. Sometimes we do education. Sometimes we do this, we do that. But there is one single thing that the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that the church must do not only in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, but he says to the last corners of the earth. And what is that? He says, you shall be witnesses unto me. In other words, the church must understand first, we must receive the feeling of the Holy Ghost to move in the supernatural. Second, never, never get out of focus. We are the children of God. We are the church of the Lord. And our main call is to preach Jesus Christ. Remember that in the book of Mark, chapter 16, the Lord Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Matthew in chapter 28, he says, make disciples unto all nations. And here he's saying, you shall be witnesses unto me, even to the last corners 
of the earth. So the main point here is being outlined by the Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and remember what is the task that you have received. Because if church does a lot of things, and because of doing this lot of things, get out of focus, and doesn't remember clearly that it is the main point, church will be doing things that are pleasant in the eyes of people, and maybe even the governments will <laughs> applaud and recognize highlight, but the main point is not being accomplished. Everything, yes, we can do, for instance, social work, yes, and many other things, education and so on, but everything must be geared properly. We must know that if we do education, is to let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is the Savior of the world. If we do social work, is to let people know that men, we were separated from God by sin. That in that condition, we could not make it to heaven. That we were heading to hell, condemnation. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it is exactly the message, whatever it is, if we do social work, if we do education, if we do whatever we do as, as church, if that is our main focus, then we are accomplishing the will of God and the Lord Jesus Christ is emphasizing here and telling the church, this is your point. This is what you have been commissioned to. You have not been commissioned to any other thing, but your commission is clear, is to be witnesses unto the Lord Jesus Christ to the last corners of the earth. Because that is what will make the difference in people. That is exactly what would bring eternal life to people. We cannot give them eternal life, but we can bring them the gospel of the Lord, the good news of salvation. We could preach unto them Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, yes, he can give them eternal life. That is the main task of the church. And now when we go in this passage, we find that when they had spoken these things, while they were watching, he was taken up. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ was together with them in that exact place. And after giving the instructions and they were asking and the Lord Jesus is explaining, it says, then the Lord Jesus, while they were seeing, they were watching, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Let's put it in our normal daily speech. They were together. They were just receiving the instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ. They asked their own questions. They hear what the Lord is saying. And then suddenly it says, while they were watching, then he was taken up and there was a cloud that covered him. He disappeared in that cloud. And he was going up, 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 up. And they, says the Bible, they were gazing. They were trying to distinguish the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of the cloud. And they did their best to see where he was. And then two angels came. And stood by them. They were watching fastly. They were interested. Suddenly they heard the voice, two angels. You, men of Galilee, why stand right here gazing up into heaven? Why are you doing that big effort? trying to distinguish Jesus 
in the midst of that crowd, this same Jesus that was taken up from you into heaven, he shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So the point here, and, and then after that, they went back to Jerusalem. So the thing here is, God is outlining in these few verses the real course of the church while going through this life down on earth. He is telling them, listen, don't go into the little details. Don't, don't, don't be so curious. God has put some few details in his own power. It is not for you to know. Secondly, you must be sure that you are filled with the Holy Ghost because that will give you, the Holy Ghost in you will give you the capacity, the supernatural things that you need while you are walking down on this earth. Third, you have a commission. You have been commissioned to preach. Not only in your own place, but to the last corners of this world, of this earth. And that is what you must be clear. And last, he says to the angels, why stand you gazing up into heaven in that way? This same Jesus that has been taken up from you into heaven, he shall come in the like manner as you saw him go, he will come back. So the last point is, must be always aware that the Lord Jesus Christ will come again. So I could say that is the summary of all of what church will do while down here. Not interested in details. Feeling themselves with the Holy Ghost. Walking in the power of God. Preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. With a clear understanding that at some point in time. Whenever it is that God has decided. The same Lord Jesus Christ that went up into heaven. He shall come down from there. And you know the rest of the things. I don't want to abound much in this, but I want to just help you to remember that we have the big, the big outline right there. The Lord Jesus Christ, the first thing that says uh, the epistle of Thessalonians, he will just descend from heaven with the trumpet of God, with the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who still remain down here living for the Lord shall be cut up together to meet the Lord in the air. And then when the, the Lord Jesus Christ takes the church down here, uh, you will have this period of time, seven years, that uh, will give... Uh, I, I say a reward of the wickedness of people while on earth and then the Lord Jesus Christ will appear for the second time. That is exactly what church must know. That is exactly what must move us in spite of the things that we have achieved down here, in spite of you as a student get your diploma from university, in spite that you as a businessman get your company Organize your business. Do whatever is in your power to make a little money to survive down here. Even though if the Lord makes you a real well-known person in this life, the Lord is telling us that there are some few things that must never come out of our mind. And this is exactly what I wanted to share with you today. So let us pray in the presence of God. Heavenly Father. We thank you for the wonderful time and the great opportunity that we received from you. We have come, O oh God, into your presence and we have received this word. We know, Lord, that you are much more interested that we know the real things 
that in your church go into little details that will not be really useful for us. Help us that we may understand this. Help us that we may be conscious that we need the infilling of the Holy Ghost as something real in ourselves. Help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis of God. Help us that we may understand that we have been called to preach the gospel to every creature around the world, to the last corners of this earth. And help us to be conscious that at some point in time, our beloved Lord Jesus Christ will first take up church with him and then will appear for the second time to accomplish all the prophecies. So we thank you today for all these mercies and these blessings. And we say, Lord, that your blessing may continue upon everyone. If there is any per uh, person who has not given his life to you, but at this time, that person wants to repent of his or sin, I ask you in the name of Jesus, forgive them. Make them new creatures of God. Write their names in the book of life in your presence, O oh Lord, and help them that they may walk with you the rest of their days. And when we finish our race down here, that we may all stand together with the redeems. In Jesus Christ, we ask you, amen, Lord, and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, my beloved, it has been all for today, and uh, if the Lord tarries, then we will be for another service like this next Sunday. Please, God, may God bless you all.